Welcome to Wine Decoded. We're down at Yabby Lake uh, with Tom Carson and the crew who are slowly and painstakingly sorting Pinot from Block 2. Block 2, yep. And uh, using some great kit to help them do that. So Tom's just off the screen on the left here, so we'll pan over and just quickly say hello. There he is. And what we've got here is the massive sorting system. So Tom, run us through it. We're, we're, we're at, the, at the starting point. What's going on, on uh, right in front of us here? Yeah, well this is uh, state-of-the-art uh, destemming equipment. So it's a complete change of technology from the old days with uh, screw receival bins and you know beaters smashing the fruit off the uh, bunches. So this is a vibrating receival bin. So the fruit is just uh, loaded into there and it just travels very gently as you can see and slowly um, across a number of slats and into the elevator that takes it up to the destemmer. So we can uh, bunch sort here. So Tim here is uh, bunch sorting Pinot, just looking for anything that's uh, not quite right, um, making sure that the fruit that's going into the destemmer is uh, top class. And, and so we can see just under where the bunches are falling down, there's, there's that other other sorting system. We'll go around and have a look at the other side, but I've just zoomed in on it there. And so what's that doing, Tom? Well, this is automatically taking out any shot berries, berries that haven't set properly, or any berries that are raisin. So some of the smaller berries raisin up, and they just fall through the screens automatically and get collected below. And uh, until you've got a receivable bin like this, you don't actually know that stuff's in your fruit. And when we first started using it and we saw this stuff coming out, you know, there was a good 20, 30 litre bucket every hour or so, and it was like, wow. Yeah. Normally that would be straight in the tank, you wouldn't even know it was there. So you're really going for the one percenters, trying to get that little bit of extra quality in through the system by getting rid of stuff that's not yeah. necessarily going to enhance your wine at the end of the day. Well, yeah, the one percenters, I suppose, is, is the way it is. Um, we only get one shot at it each year. So, uh, you know, we want to take our time, make sure that we're getting the best that we possibly can out of each block. And having this sort of equipment is, um, and the people, is uh, what it's all about. So how long would it take you to do a ton? Well, a ton, um, which is only about 65 dozen bottles of wine, um, it'd take us over an hour, an hour, 10 minutes, maybe an hour and a quarter. And so that commit compared to a big commercial winery where you do a ton in about a minute through a through a, a massive crusher distemmer. Yeah, well you can get any size crusher. You can get a 50 ton per hour or a 100 ton per hour or yeah. you know just upwards from there. So yeah, I mean this is um, it's not about quantity. Yeah. Obviously, it's about the quality we can get. Yeah. Okay, so we've walked around to the other side of that hopper where the whole bunches were coming down, and you can see beneath it where those shot berries, raisin berries, earwigs, etc. are all falling through the system. And they're now dropping down through a chute here. Into our bucket of crap. To the bucket of crap, which uh, will be disposed of. Yeah. All automatically. All too easy. And what happens over here with the uh, the juice that's, that's also collecting? Yeah, well that's juice, juice from the bin. Uh, when it's come up from the vineyard where the you know, tractor's been sort of bouncing and breaking the fruit up. So that juice, we can, we can decide to add that back or we can decide to put that somewhere else if we like. So it just depends on how it looks, uh, whether we put it back in the tank or we decide we might um, you know, make some rosé out of it or something like that. Yeah, sweet. Well, we'll go around and continue our journey of the grape and uh, show you what's next. So here's the start of the system where the whole bunches get tipped in and then sorted. They then go up this elevator here. And so, Tom, after the elevator, when they, they hit this uh, next delta oscillus, That's it. What happens there? Well, uh, this is gravity destemming. So in the old way, it would be thrown into a cage and beaters would smash the fruit around in circles and, and knock the berries off. Here they actually fall by gravity through some cages and the cages just de gently rock backwards and forwards and the berries come off the stems and fall down onto the table you can see there and then the stems that get rolled out uh, out the side there. 
So what's what's your aim? What's why, why, did, why did you get this piece of kit? What benefit does it give you for the wine at the end of the day? I think it just uh, gives us every chance to be able to remove anything uh, from the fruit that is uh, not desirable. Also gives us a chance to destem really gently so we get a lot of whole berries. As you can see most of the berries are intact coming off the table there. Um, so we like that whole berry influence. And uh, we can then use this, uh, the, the stainless tub it's going into. We can lift that and drop it into the tank by gravity so we don't, we're not pumping the fruit either. So it's a little sort of multi-level yeah. uh, you know, system that uh, every, every bit of it does as best it possibly can for that, um, for the application. So at the end of the day, what's happening is you're getting full control over how you extract colour, tannin, flavour from your fruit, whether you want it as whole berries or not, or whole bunches or not, whether you want the crap in there or not. Obviously you're choosing to take the crap out, which is probably a good thing. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, it's, it, it's making it a much more gentle process for you too. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're starting, we're not, we're, not, um, we're not compromising anything at this stage. We're doing the best we possibly can. So, you know, a whole year's worth of viticulture and growing in the season. You know, it's picked on one day, it's processed on one day. Um, so, as I said, you only get one shot at it per year. So we've got to make sure that we're, we're, we're giving it every possible chance that when we see, when we get the fruit into the, into the vat and we ferment it, you know, we're, we're seeing the true potential of the vineyard and, 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 and the season and what, what's uh, possible. And we're not, you know, going, oh, we should have done this. Oh, maybe we should have done that. I wish I had a good destemma, you know. Yeah. There's, no, there's no excuses, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think when you're trying to make exceptional wine, that's what you've got to do, isn't it? Well, yeah, you've, you've, got, to, you've got to give it every shot. You've got to think about every part of the process and really, really be 100% uh, committed to what you're doing, not have any doubts about it. Well, let's go have a bit of a quick closer look at the grapes and then uh, I'll leave you to the rest of Vintage. So we're a bit closer into the system now and you can see coming out of the Delta Oscillus, what a great name, uh, at the bottom there. Uh, some berries coming through and the guys here are picking out little bits of stalk, uh, anything other than a grape that has made it through the system. And as Tom was saying before, all of those grapes are basically whole in one piece and, uh, and, and not, a, not a hell of a lot of, sort of juicing going on there. A very gentle way to crush fruit and this will be ready shortly to be tipped into an open fermenter top? Yep, into one of the oak cubes, yeah. Tell, tell us about the oak cubes and uh, we'll, we'll pan around and have a quick shot of those. And tell us, tell us why, you, uh, why you like those. Yeah, we've had these in for uh, about four years now. Uh, so we ferment all our best blocks of Pinot in the cubes. Uh, we just find the, the, the steadiness of the fermentation, um, the insulative effect of the oak, uh, and the general gentleness of just pumping over and not plunging, uh, and also being able to keep the wines in there and maintain, maintain a really constant temperature um, is superior, we think, to stainless steel, yeah. So, that, so it's, uh, it's like what's old is new again, you know, yeah. we, we all went away from this stuff because it's like, look, we can build it all out of stainless steel and now everybody's going, hey, look, we can build it out of wood, check this out. Yeah. And we're going to cane prune, we're going to yeah. compost, yeah, that's right. we're going to go hole punch. We're going to get horses back in the vineyard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You only get one shot to experiment every year and, and an investment like these oak coos, that, what you're saying, 30, 30 grand a pop. They're about 30 grand a pop. Is a, is a pretty significant investment and it's a pretty significant experiment. Yeah. To, to make and uh, it's, it's perhaps a sign that you think that you're sort of starting to understand your fruit as well and uh, how to get the most out of it. Yeah, well, we're, I mean, it's a combination of having that experience and then also uh, understanding what the season's giving you. So not just having, you know, really set sort of uh, ideas about how the wine should be made. Um, for example, this year, uh, we're not really using any whole bunch in the Pinot um, because you know we've had a quite a cool spring. Early summer wasn't warm. Uh, the canopies are big. Rainfall was above average. You know we're looking at the quality of the stalk. They're still quite green. There's a lot of you know really bright sort of fluorescent green colour there. They smell really green, and uh, we think that's going to have too much influence on the wine. So you know last year 16. 
It was a lovely year, lots of sun throughout the year. And we used a lot of whole bunch, up to 40% in the Pinots. But this year, we've only used, uh, only on two sections of the vineyard where I was happy with the stalks, did we use it. Other parts, I'm like, no, I, I think it's gonna be a mistake. So um, I suppose that that is sort of how we try and um, adapt our winemaking, is pick up on the season and how to get the best out of each year. So you can see a little uh, stalk here that's, that, that's still quite green. When, when Tom's referring to the greenness, he's saying, well, the stalk, you can see the colour's green, it's not browning. So as, as a stalk matures, it'll, it'll do what's called lignify, it'll start to turn brown, and you get lovely spicy flavours, and, 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 but you don't get any sort of green, hard character coming off them, and that's what his concern is this year. Again, one of the things about experience as a winemaker to, to work out when it's going to work and when it's going to not and make your best guess and hope, hope that you're doing the right thing year after year. Uh, you can see fruit getting tipped into an open ferment here, no pumping involved so again complete control over the way the fruit is handled and the extraction from that fruit of colour, tannin, flavour. Too easy, job's done. So this is the end of the system where the stalks come out and uh, are then disposed of. You can see them uh, stacking up here and they'll go, do they go out onto the vineyard or they... Uh, oh, we do compost them. You compost them? Yep. Okay. So, well thanks for joining us on Wine Decoded and, uh, and checking out one of the, uh, I guess the best systems available on the market for winemakers to help them sort fruit at the moment. and. Uh, Hopefully this will uh, make some decent uh, Yabby Lake Pinot. Thanks Tom. Cheers.